This video is a brief introduction to the Dragos platform. The Dragos platform is a passive network monitoring solution and threat detection capability meant to be deployed within the industrial control system network or network segments. The ultimate goal of the Dragos platform is consistent monitoring of ingress, egress, and lateral communication to identify adversary behavior. Behavioral analytics are ran on the data upon ingest to identify not just low-level indicators, but adversary tradecraft. A lot of this content is created by the threat intelligence team at Dragos, who are actively tracking activity groups that have shown the capability and intent to target these industrial control networks. When an incident that warrants investigation is found, playbooks are offered. Playbooks are written by the Threat Operations Center within Dragos and focus on those first few crucial minutes of the investigation to ensure a methodical and holistic approach. Deployment of the Dragos platform is contingent on the existing network architecture. Network traffic is ingested to the Dragos platform commonly through a network tap or configured span port. Additionally, host information can be forwarded from a local agent, such as NX log, to provide host visibility as well. For this demonstration, we will consider the three primary questions facing network defenders today. The first of which, what is on my network? For this, we'll need to jump over to the Dragos platform. We can see a vertical navigation toolbar on the left, and we'll begin in the Asset Explorer. This is a spreadsheet style representation of all assets communicating on my network. We can customize which columns we view and apply additional filtering either on the network or capture point, uh, put date time requirements, and choose to include or exclude external assets. We can notice a quick summary of the types of devices we have, servers, HMIs, RTUs, and we're not just looking at Windows systems because we have that visibility down into the lower layer. Now I can export all of this data to a CSV or TSV, and specify what data points of interest I want to be included in that. On the lower left, I can see what sample size I'm looking at, or what assets rather out of my total collection. I can page through the specific devices or choose to show more on each page. And if I choose a specific device, we'll take an example here, an engineering workstation, I can see a quick snapshot summary of what I know about that. This includes uh, tags assigned to the box either by the Dragos platform or by a user, some network information, and then a summary of protocols. With each protocol type, I have a summation of how many bytes were transferred during that time. Down below, I can see some notification summary information if I had any notifications associated with that device. Now, zoning is very important for asset management within Dragos. Here, users can create custom zones and auto-assign assets to a zone based on vendor, MAC address, IP, or any other characteristic. So this is useful if I'm looking from a purely asset inventory perspective, but let's take it one step further and visualize this data as well as the network communications between each asset. I do that through my interactive map. Now on my interactive map, I can Again, apply specific filtering. I'm choosing to show all assets as well as all link types. And here I get a breakdown of assets and their assigned zones. Some of this font may be small, but here I'm looking at an external zone. I have an OPS uh, center enterprise network and up here I have two compressor station zones. I can filter this based on protocol now here we only see the protocols that were observed on this network in the time that we've specified. So if I were looking at a larger capture, I would see additional protocols down here. I can filter these as needed for specific triage or uh, setting up alerts, or I can view all. Additionally, I can create baselines on a given subset of time. So a snapshot somewhat of what assets and what types of communication were taking place on the network. And then I can uh, iteratively compare that baseline against the current state of my network to identify outlayers. I can also replay those 
to identify what has changed or what is new. Now, one very nice feature on the interactive map is by selecting a zone, I can see details about the assets just within that zone. Notice I'm not seeing all communications, I'm just seeing the specific point-to-point -point transfers from all assets in this zone. If I choose one of my compressor stations, I can see what each one of those devices is talking to. On the right, I see a breakdown similar to the asset inventory, and I can choose one of these to see additional information about that device, to include tags or custom notes made by an analyst, network information, as well as protocol data. Now this can be used for triage capacity as well. As I see here, I've got one unique device over here that is unzoned. It is talking directly to my compressor station as well as my external zone. I can select on the zones, I can select on the link uh, between two zones to get summary information or on the specific asset to see what exactly it is talking to. From here, I can pivot up and select another asset, again, to see specific details about it, as well as pivot to see what else within my organization that asset is talking to. So useful to visualize uh, what is on your network, to really see uh, similar to a network diagram, but more importantly, perform triage and identify artifacts or systems of interest that may warrant further investigation. This brings me to the more pressing question and the most common ask from our clients, is my network under attack? To address this question, we will take a look at the other primary pane within the Dragos platform. On the left, again, we see our vertical navigation toolbar, and on the bottom, we have this uh, directional arrow set and this grabber bar. This allows me to slide the bar left and right and view the other side of our platform interface. I will select the two arrows on the right to move it all the way over. Now a quick note on our dashboard. This is uh, completely customizable and where someone may start when they sit down in the morning to take a look at the platform's health and what is being seen on the network. We have a summary of assets, uh, asset type, as well as the health of the Dragos platform. Down below we have some alert and notification information a summary of cases, and we can configure additional summaries either based on protocols or monitoring network segments. But we're going to talk about detections. So let's focus on our detection pane. Here we are viewing all four types of threat detection. And the four types of threat detection is a concept that we have white papers on and other videos that have already been released. But as a quick summation for this video, on the lower left, we have configuration. These are behavioral attributes about the network that may be of interest. So new source IP detected, new certificates, and so on. Up above, we have modeling, which is commonly thresholds applied to changes in a baseline. We are also here leveraging our uh, strategic partnerships with vendors to gather information about either pressure sensitivity ratings or temperature ratings. In the lower right, we have indicators, which are commonly one-to-one -one matches against an IP, domain, or file type, and we can see some examples here. The ultimate goal is getting to a threat behavior, which is more focused on adversary tradecraft rather than specific hits. Now, some quick notes on uh, where this data comes from. We can jump over to our content pane which will move our slider back over to the left and bring us back to the uh, pane that we see now. These are a lot of the queries that are being run against the data as it is ingested. And by scrolling through, we can see some of the specific activity groups that Dragos has already reported on and know that our analytics are executing as intended. Above that, we can take a quick look at our notifications. Up above, we can see some based on host logs. We can see some vendor information being forwarded to us, as well as some based on network detection. And we can scroll down and view some specifics to uh, orient ourselves with uh, what was the basis for this notification being triggered.
Jumping over to the Data tab, we can view files that have been extracted from the traffic on ingest, or we can take a look at some specific what we call query-focused datasets, or QFDs. And these are really where the threat intelligence team writes the detections for activity groups. By scrolling through, we can see, again, some more that are uh, associated with adversary activity that we have reported on, and we'll choose one example to look at. Let's choose Windows Events. This will pull up the QFD query results associated with that QFD. Here again, we see a row column uh, sheet representation of uh, the results against that QFD. And if we choose one of these to investigate as an example, we can see uh, some of these specific fields that Dragos has pulled out, we can use to pivot or filter on. We can also see the raw log that was returned uh, from the host forwarding agent. Now we'll move our navigation pane back over to the right so we can take a look again at the uh, notification dashboard that an analyst may be more concerned about. If we scroll down and choose one as an example, we'll choose PS Exec Recon and a pivot detected. We see the individual notifications that have been aggregated together to create this behavioral alert. Now this is very beneficial. An analyst doesn't have to go through the process of uh, associating all three of these unique detections together to create a behavior. The Dragos platform has done it for us, again, based on that threat intelligence that we've codified. We also see references to playbooks up here, which we'll investigate a little bit further. And so upon investigation, I think this uh, has a high severity and warrants uh, additional triage. So within the Dragos platform, I can create a case for this analytic. This is a fantastic segue to the final part of our video today, which is how do I respond to a threat or compromise once it is detected? Now for this uh, notification, we already have a case created for us. So we will jump over to our case management system. And here we can see all of the active ongoing cases. Now the first pane that we are presented with is our journal. And this is similar to an audit log. We have a history recording here of all users that have interacted with the case and uh, applied additional evidence files or made modifications. We have an opportunity to write in a justification and a hypothesis. Up above, you can see some settings that were created when I uh, first established the case. Access can be private or public based on permission issues, uh, set priority, created, and the user. Under notifications, we can see that we have the specific notifications that were originally tied to that alert. We have some additional ones listed in here. And that came from clicking on the add notification bar and tying in additional artifacts that may be of interest to the case. Notice that Dragos automatically makes use of my screen real estate. By moving the dynamic bar over, I can now access both panes at the same time and I can arbitrarily move this right and left to see what is going on in my case or what step I'm on, as well as the raw logs. For now, we won't associate any additional notifications, but instead move on to the evidence tab. The evidence tab gives us the opportunity to associate evidence files or artifacts that may exist outside of the Dragos platform. A good example would be, say, a worldview report that Dragos published on this threat activity group. We can upload this PDF, associate it with the case, and then anyone with the ability to access this specific case can pull that report down and read it. We also have the ability to upload code snippets or links to other websites. So if we have additional artifacts or uh, say reverse engineering notes, we can put those in here as well. Finally, we have the playbooks. And the playbooks are where the talk has really codified their knowledge and their experience of incident handling into the platform. Notice on the left, we have a dropdown. We have two playbooks associated with this case, as well as this create specific task option. Here I can create my own 
tasks affiliated with this specific case. If we jump back to, we'll use investigate file payload and click down to any number of these. Now the ultimate goal of this section is to provide brief guidance. During incident response, time is of the essence and the analyst generally isn't looking for a deep dive into protocol analysis or methodologies. What we're looking for are very quick knowledge transfer snippets that can help identify what critical answers need to be asked. Ideally, if the answer or data set is contained within the Dragos platform, we can link to that as well. So we first state best practices and what questions should be asked to triage that step, and then we provide potential answers. Also notice that I can mark each one of these as complete, or skipped, or incomplete, needing further review, or so on. If we choose another example here, say host, investigate source host and user agent, and we select one of our pivots, and present me with the raw source logs. This dynamic pane is very valuable in this instance because I can look at my step, I can receive direction, I can pivot to the data, and then investigate the raw logs directly all within the same window. All of my actions, all of my notes are being tracked within the case management system, which I can then use to resolve or further the investigation. An additional note on playbooks, if we click up here on the last tab to view all, I can now see all of the playbooks that are in the content pack deployed on my Dragos platform. Now, content packs are being released consistently from the Dragos team, and so as the Threat Operations Center performs additional engagements and creates new playbooks to facilitate the triage and response process, these will be updated. So useful for incident response, as well as knowledge transfer and even training of junior or senior level staff. We can see some are specific to a type of device, and some may be targeted towards a ICS protocol. If I have an analyst that may not be aware of one of these protocols, he can select that. Or if I have an analyst that may be well versed in say safety instrumented systems and she wants to perform threat hunting on the network, she can choose the playbook and view all of the playbook steps and then also leverage our dynamic pane instance to dive into the specific QFDs that are referenced or for a more freeform style hunt, jump up to the interactive map, all while tracking her status in the playbook. So we have seen a very brief introduction to the Dragos platform and some of the core functionality through three primary question use cases. A quick summary is that the Dragos platform is a passive network monitoring capability, but more than that, the real value comes from the threat intelligence that has been codified into the tool through the Threat Intelligence Team and the Threat Operations Center at Dragos to facilitate not just the detection of indicators or low-level identifiers of adversaries, but focus on the tradecraft and adversary behavior. When an alert is found that warrants an investigation, the Threat Operations Center has provided playbooks which can be used to create a methodical, step-by-step -step approach to investigating the incident. That concludes our introduction today. If you have additional questions or would like further information, please visit us at dragos.com.